Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day, and we have a big, big personality joining us in the studios today. Uh, we're talking about the Rainbow Nation of South Africa. And so we have the Minister of Tourism uh, visiting Ghana. There's a conference that's happening. It's the United Nations World Tourism Organization Women Empowerment Conference. And she's here, of course, uh, to be a panelist as well as also tell us more about tourism in South Africa and how we can bridge that gap between South Africa and the rest of the African countries to ensure that we project a positive light out there. Quite recently, there have also been a lot of uh, reports on xenophobic attacks as well. And I think that cast a, you know, a cloud on South African tourism. And so what is being done to ensure or to restore um, you know, um, the, the, the confidence in tourist um, you know, attraction in South Africa as well. And so she joins me this morning, Mama Loko Kubai in Goban. Ugobane. Pardon me. So it's Ugobane. Mama Loko Kubai Ngubani. Okay, that was fast. Let's take it slow. <laughs> Mama Loko Kubai. Kubai Ngubani. Ngubani. Akwaba. Good that morning. means welcome. Thank you. Uh, yeah, you're welcome I'm to still, Ghana. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> That's I'm tea, still, by the way. I'm still trying to learn. You're still trying to learn. Don't worry. So Akwaba yeah. means welcome. Welcome. So you just okay. say Midase. Midase. Aha. Okay. So I'm introducing you officially to my country Definitely. as well. Do you love I Ghana? Know. I enjoy, I'm enjoying Ghana. Yeah. Uh, the minister yesterday said to us, you must see Ghana, mm -hmm. eat Ghana, wear, wear Ghana. Ghana. So you're wearing Experience. Ghana? No, Not this yet. one okay. actually is a material <laughs> I got in one of the countries I visited okay. recently. Okay. So I'll go and get fabric. Next time I visit somewhere, I'll be wearing You'll Ghana. You'll be wearing. But what have you eaten? Um, I've eaten, I can't remember the name, but what is it it's like? a mix of um, a beef, chicken. They've, they've mixed it all. In the inside of the beef, and they've mixed it together. It's quite nice. Shawarma. Shawarma. Oh, that. Okay, <laughs> but that's that's not a local dish. Have, uh -huh. have you tried any fried plantain? Yes, I've eaten plantain. Oh, you like that? I love right? plantain. Have you tried kenke? Fufu? No, I haven't tried soup? kenke. I haven't tried kenke. No soup as well. I did eat another soup. I forgot the name. I must get the name as what, well. What was inside? Was it goat meat or was it, it fish? Was, it was goat meat. I love goat meat. Okay. So, so it's called I enjoy, kakra. I enjoy goat meat. Okay. I eat. I ate goat meat as well. Okay. Yeah. It, but goat meat is, is almost all our country stars course. have it. But we have a very uh, special way of, you know, okay. making goat light soup. We call it in kakra. No, I did have some, some soup. Okay. With with the goat. Because I love so. goat, so I I do try It's called everything. a ponchin kaka. A ponchi kaka. A ponchi and then ponchi yesterday kaka. they showed me a drink. They okay. called it topianka. Okay. T O P I A C A. Okay. Okay. Did you like um, it? It's it's got and they put the Ghanaian um flag on it. On it? Yes. Ah, you've been enjoying Ghana, huh? <laughs> I'm glad. But you're welcome and you look very well as Thank well. Thank you very much. And I Thank know it's all much. about tourism, but let's talk about you first, even before we go into that, because I was mm. just reading a bit about you. And you've mm -hmm. been a minister for many years, from energy to communication to science and technology and now to tourism. Tourism. I've been here. Yeah, I've been in different portfolios. Okay. I must say it's it's been quite helpful mm. because now in tourism when I talk about our establishment, I'm able to talk about energy efficiency. Exactly. From what I've learned. Mm. Uh, we're utilizing technology to solve some of our problems. Yeah. Um so can see being former minister of communication and government yeah. spokesperson so reaching out and communicating more is one of the things I do. Has this and always just, been the dream, especially because I know you came from um, a home that was not too well to do whilst growing up all the way through till, um, you know, you, you finished school because you had a child along mm -hmm. the line as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure that growing up must have been difficult for you. It was actually. I thought I would be a medical doctor. Oh, okay. Yeah. When I studied, I, I did well. I was doing medicine and science as a student. Mm. Um, did very well as I was growing up. So I, I, I never thought I'd be in mainstream politics. Okay, how so did I that thought, happen? I, I thought I would be like doing medical uh, thing. As a, as a young person going in a very political environment, I grew up in Sweetborn and grew up in Soweto. So it's a okay. political environment mm. uh, where there's no way that you can be conscious. Okay. Um, so going into high school, joining courses, not in leadership, but be a member. This is a student movement of learners in high schools. Mm. I went to university. I started leading in terms of um, student movement. Yeah. Uh, I was the chairperson of our university branch. Um, so that became one of the things I do. 
But initially, I thought it's something that I can do on the sides, but then still do my main work. Mm -hmm. I branched, I left, I didn't do, I decided to go into project management as okay. a consultant. Mm. I was a consultant in the banking sector, so I joined private sector, worked there. I've worked in various sectors. Yeah. I've worked in the NGOs because my first leadership was in the NGO. Okay. And that's something that I think ground me more into public work without mm -hmm. even realizing it because we worked with women. Yeah. more and we were helping them the NGO was about helping them to become self-sustainable okay. okay so we're looking at the women who are receiving grants from government and to say how do we turn this grant into a business uh -huh. so they would contribute will help them to contribute to do some business so that almost like sort of drove a lot of consciousness about empowerment yeah especially of yeah. women and young people okay which I continue even in my spare time I do that quite a lot do you have enough time for that I do find time for it. Okay. I do find time. I, I, I believe it's when you are able to prioritize your things and you are able to put your mind to it. I still study. Um, mm. I just finished my research proposal for my PhD. I'm going to defend early next year. So I, I do find time for that. Okay. It's things that, that's what I'm saying, you have to prioritize. Mm -hmm. What is priority for you? family your work and yeah. obviously your own development mm. and this is what i when i talk to young women i say the most important thing is to continuously develop yourself definitely as a person. has it been difficult trying to encourage women to do that especially in africa yes. i mean we're fighting for affirmative bill i'm yeah. um, even in ghana we're still yet to pass that law and all of that and so th there has been a conversation about getting more women into leadership positions um you know to make decisions for the country and for the continent as well that has been quite a struggle I mean, yeah. yeah, but then it you, is important mm -hmm. because not only because of making decisions, you want young girls when they grow up to have role models. I was fortunate. I have Mama Winnie Mandela as my role model because mm. I grew up in Soweto. Okay. Many of us knew there's a woman who's very strong, who's fierce, who's a leader, mm -hmm. and we could look up to her. And many of us wanted to be Mama Winnie. Yeah. So women leaders are not about only taking decisions, but about inspiring the generation that is growing up. Okay. To know that if I'm a young person, it is possible as a woman, as a girl, that I can do it. Definitely. And I, I like that we stay still on women because when it comes to women, especially in South Africa, that's also another major concern because there have been a lot of attacks on women. Quite recently, there was this my next movement that started i saw it on social media after that student got raped um you know and murdered when she picked up something at the post office and so there have been a series of attacks on women and for women like you who are up there at the top helping to make decisions and protecting women how easy has this fight against crime um, against women been for you the gender-based violence is not an easy fight mm. because remember major part of what we have seen in south africa it happens in the homes mm. in so the homes. in the homes so it's spouses killing their wives, it's oh. boyfriends killing their girlfriends. That's the majority. So that's why I'm saying it's not an easy fight because mm -hmm. you can't police a house. Mm. You can't police a spouse. Yeah. Because, and, and this comes even historically where families, when something like this happened, they will almost like cover it up mm -hmm. and say, you'll embarrass the family, let's not talk about it. It starts with a man beating a woman mm -hmm. and all that. And people have been saying it's culture. And I say to them, I'm married to, to the Zulus. Mm -hmm. um, in that culture, a woman is like a queen. Okay. My daughter is a princess in the house. Mm -hmm. um, so you really looked after. And to the extent I say to them, when I got married and then I started because I, I had a child and then yeah, I started before. losing weight. Mm. So the in-laws started asking my husband to say, you are not looking after her, she's losing weight. Oh. Because it's, it's a simple, they understand that I must be well be being, I must be well looked after. He must never even touch me. Now, that's where you separate it. Mm. Because sometimes people confuse this to say it's cultures. Yeah. It's not. Yeah. But yeah. the issue of not talking where we have to push as South Africa for women to stand up, to come out, to not fear that I'll be victimized or to, I'll be an embarrassment. Yeah. That if this has happened, even in my household, I must be able to talk. So we've been able to win that battle. Okay. More women are rising up, they are talking. Mm. That's the first point, okay. which is very good. Our president then, President Ramaphosa, says to us, I will be the leader, I will be the champion. As we speak today, he's launching the 16 days activism yeah. against gender-based violence. Yeah. And he says it's not only about 16 days, mm -hmm. but it's about 365 days. Mm. We've now, even as South Africa launched, specialized courts where we're saying 
We want fast action for yeah. those, but the president has called for maximum sentences okay. for those. Even parole, we're saying, can we get our judicial system to review for those who are found to have done wrong, especially on gender-based violence mm -hmm. and attack on girls. So we're very firm in terms of our law, and the police are coming on board, and we believe that we'll turn the tide. Has this cast a bad light on the country? Because when you go online and you Google South Africa, of course, the beautiful um, you know, tourist sites are there. But also there is that story about women uh, or gender-based violence, and especially on social media. It's scary when you see some of these things. Has it put South Africa in a negative light globally? It does impact us mm. negatively. But the other issue which we normally say, sometimes we get exaggerated stories. Okay. So which are not factual. Mm. So you get fake news in the new light of fake news, sometimes they get reported. Who are responsible for some of these negative stories? Our own media at mm. home. So we do have conversations with them constantly to say, guys, understand the impact of what you are doing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes somebody sensationally puts a headline that does not exist. Somebody, the other time I had to challenge them, they put a headline to say the murder capital of, of, of the world. Mm -hmm. And I said, mm -hmm. that's not true. We're mm -hmm. not. Because yeah. when you look and Google statistics globally, where we've done research, South Africa does not it's have, not it's not even the top 10 crime yeah. hotspots. Mm. Not. But when you look at the reports, you look at social media, you look at, you almost think that we are in the top 10 of criminal that's been Activities. the picture that's been painted because I was just telling you that the last yeah. time I, I traveled to South Africa, I was warned, be careful, don't walk by yourself. You always need to have someone, at least a man or an indigent, um, walking with you. Don't go to certain areas because they're very dangerous, especially because you are a woman. And so, like you said, there has been that headline, uh, but also it's because of stories that have been passed on to some of us. And so for a lot of people traveling to South Africa, you are, you are encouraged to stay clear of certain areas as well. And even aside that, there has also been, or there have been xenophobic attacks that have been reported as well. I've heard a few people say that some of them were exaggerated. And so then it puts South Africa in the negative light for a lot of other countries as well. Okay, starting with the issue of mm -hmm. reports, mm -hmm. for example, I always say to the tourists who arrive, don't do what you don't do at home. Okay. Simple. Traveling at night alone, I grew up in Soweto, in Johannesburg, mm. people think it's a. I've, I've over years lived. I've never been attacked. Mm. Um, I've, I've be, walked in the streets. Yes, there is crime. Yeah, and I'll come to the safety of tourists mm -hmm. later, mm -hmm. just to explain what we are doing. Yeah, there is crime, and we are dealing with it because when you have crimes in society, then it affects everybody. But sometimes issues, as you say, they are exaggerated. For example, indeed, if you go in an area where you are not known, you are lost, in a hub where mm -hmm. there's criminality, yes, it will happen. If you travel, for example, I had an incident where some of the tourists went hiking at 3 a.m. Mm. in the bushes. I mean, you're just making yourself vulnerable. Yeah. Because there isn't anyone, we're not expecting anyone, anyone. to be there. Even visible exactly. policing, it doesn't exist. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying, don't do what you don't do at home. We don't travel most of the time everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. I go to countries in America and everywhere. I don't travel at night alone. Yeah. You know, so those things, the parameters still exist. Yeah. Then coming to the issue of the xenophobic attacks. Mm -hmm. They, yes, indeed, a lot of things that were in the social media, in the media, were fake news. They were? And in, okay. Yeah, a lot of pictures. For example, there was a video of oh, people I showed, burned. of people jumping off the windows. Yeah. If you go, like in now technology, and being former minister of technology, science and technology, like in now, when you look at a picture, you are able to trace it, its origin. Mm -hmm. Even the videos you can trace. It had happened somewhere, I think, India or Bangladesh. Mm. A factory was burning, and people were jumping out. Somebody put it at that time to reflect as if it's South Africa and it wasn't. Okay. And I'm not saying that we didn't have the attacks on mm -hmm. foreign nationals. We did have them. Mm. I saw a video yes. of a man who was getting burned um, and getting hit by clubs and, and all of that as well. That was quite recently, during the recent no, xenophobic attacks. we didn't have that. We mm. didn't have anyone being burned in the recent xenophobic. Okay. Not at all. Not at all. Um, we had 10 people who died. Eight of them were South Africans. Okay. The people who died in the recent 2019 yeah. xenophobic attacks. Eight, ten people who died, eight of them were South Africans. But the belief was that a lot of Nigerians and Ghanaians were the no. ones who were attacked. No. None of them died. Okay. Actually, the two were non-Nigerian, no Ghanaians. Mm. 
were Somalians. Okay. So okay. those are the facts. That's what I'm saying. We have issues of fake news, what gets fed in the public, what is not. Let me tell you what happened and how we're dealing with it. Mm -hmm. How we had this is that we had a, a lockdown in, in mm -hmm. the city center, mm -hmm. Hillbro area, where we having many of people can walk into. Mm -hmm. So the police said we can't have a part of the city that people are not able to walk into. Yeah. Neither South Africans, no foreign national, no men, no woman no could walk on, into those streets. Mm -hmm. So police did a raid in that. Okay. In one of the raids, they found children who were trafficked. And unfortunately, the person who was arrested was a foreign national. So mm. it sparked a reaction to say, if these people are taking our kids to sell them outside, we will react, we will chase them out. That's what started the whole the, thing. The violence. Okay. So we had to come in as South Africa to say, but not all foreign nationals who come to South Africa mm -hmm. are coming with ill intention. Mm -hmm. We've seen those who come in with good intention. Exactly. They've done very well. Exactly. They are in our universities. They are in Everywhere. our institutions. They've helped us build South Africa. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we took a conscious decision as South Africa is that we're not going to do refugee camps. Okay. We don't have we refugee don't have camps. don't have any at all. Mm. Anyone who comes into South Africa and gets a refugee status is integrated to the society. All right. They gain access to our medical mm -hmm. facilities for free. Mm -hmm. They gain access to our health. Um, our um, education, All right. their children get to find comfort in our schools. We provide for them the meals. We provide the clothes to go to school. So we've taken that conscious decision. With recent attacks, mm -hmm. some NGOs, especially global NGOs, said to us, maybe you must go back and create refugees so that your society and your people can. And we said, no, no. it was a decision that we took and we believe it's a correct decision as government. Right. And we'll keep it that way because we want to make sure and we understand that the democracy we had, mm -hmm. and this comes from that, it didn't come by us by alone. You. Exactly. We were supported by the continent. Mm -hmm. We achieved it exactly. through the support of the continent. Especially even Nigeria. And that's, so why, that's why they were that's why uh, the benefit mm -hmm. must be for all. So those who are finding refuge in our country must have the benefit of having the facilities and everything that we have that, equal to South Africans. There was a conversation that, you know, we seem to be fighting amongst ourselves as yeah. black people instead yeah. of fighting the people who came to rule us and have left us enslaved for many, many years. And so that was also another, um, you know, reason why people were hurt or were angry that there were attacks on other foreign nationals in the country. Because we should be together. We should fight a common cause instead of fighting against each other and so that I, I feel like that's also um, you know um, affected tourism in South Africa because then people you know people were more cautious about traveling to South Africa and I'm sure your numbers dwindled after a while what's the situation now we've looked at our numbers our numbers are fine in terms mm. of that because we've been very clear the South African government doesn't support xenophobia mm. or any attacks on anyone yeah um, President as well went out and sent envoys to countries to explain what happened mm. in real yeah. time. Yeah. Ourselves, as Minister of Tourism, I've been meeting with several ministers. Immediately after it happened, we were in Russia for UNW2 assembly. Mm -hmm. We had a CAF meeting, a requested platform to explain what happened. Yeah. So, in clarifying from a leadership point of view, we took responsibility. We said this is wrong. Mm -hmm. We've been open about it. We said it's not going to happen. Yeah. Our president, Canadian president, went to South Africa as well. Part of that, president explained. The envoys were sent here. Yeah. But one of the things we learned out of this is that 2008, mm -hmm. they happened, this incident happened, mm -hmm. and we thought it was just an incident, and we left. But it recurred in 2019. Yeah. Now, president, what he has done, he appointed President Shisani mm -hmm. from Mozambique, former president of Mozambique, right. and former president Kikwete of Tanzania. As part of the people who are helping us, to find long-lasting solutions that this doesn't happen again. All right. And part of that is to engage communities, South African communities, and foreign national organizations that exist in South Africa to be able to say, what are the issues, what are the concerns amongst the communities, so that we find the solution, we solve them. Definitely. Part of the issue is because our economy has not been doing well by the way, as South Africa. Uh -huh. So one of the things is that we've been pressurized and a lot of people, yes. South Africans, have lost jobs. Yeah. Now, they tend to blame, you know, ordinarily as a person, when you face 
challenges mm -hmm. and difficulties. It's very difficult to even look at yourself to say, I might I'm, be the cause. Yeah. You try and find the next person to blame. to blame. And that's part of what we are doing in conversation with our own South Africans to explain. You are not unemployed because of a foreign national. Mm. We are going through a difficult time. Our economy is not doing well. So let's work together to up lift our economy so that all of us can have enough. Definitely. And we're looking forward to it. You're in Ghana for a conference. It started yesterday. Tell me mm. about it. The conference has been going very well. Mm. Um, yesterday I had um, a panel where we talked about what is it that we need to do for women. Yeah. Uh, it's focused on women leadership and what we can do for women in the sector. So we shared our own experiences as South Africa. All right. Because we're doing quite a lot for women in leadership position in terms of mentorship, training. For them to be able to take multi-corporate uh, leadership as CEOs, mm -hmm. we're doing a lot in incubating SMMEs who are running, for example, BNBs, bed and breakfast, who are running guest lodges mm -hmm. as part of making sure that the businesses are sustainable. Yeah. So we're sharing that and we're sharing because we're one of the pilot sites for UNWTO, what we are doing with women in rural areas where we are building lodges for them and also incubating and training them to run successful businesses. Right. So we're doing quite a lot and that we were sharing. But I also had the pleasure to interact with a lot of um, Ghanaian tour operators mm -hmm. um, in the afternoon and also the media. Yeah. Just to interact and listen to some of the feedback they have about how we're doing, are we welcoming to Ghanaians in South Africa yeah. in terms of tourism um, and the issues around the visas, if yes. you know, yes. that yes. quite a lot of people have been confused Very. about the decision because mm -hmm. we took a decision in South Africa in June, the Minister of Home Affairs announced that we will have a visa waiver. This is yes. not for diplomatic. Understand somebody wrote an article well, we, we were meant to believe said that, that it's, um, it's only for diplomatic. We've always had diplomatic visa waiver, by okay. the way, okay. over years. All right. The new dispensation is for everybody. So everybody gets a visa waiver? Gets a visa, visa waiver. All right. What has been the delay is that there hasn't been, because for us to implement it, we require the signature from the Ghanaian authorities. All right. I'm informed that that will happen tomorrow. I see. The Ghanaian team is in South Africa to finalize the discussions and the signatures. So we're looking for what? Because I know when my president comes here, that's the first thing he wants to know that it has been implemented because that's his instruction to us as ministers, both myself working together with Minister Mutsualedi, who's the Minister of Home Affairs in okay. South Africa. Okay. So that has been sorted. We also had to share with them a lot of our tour operators and our media to say, what is it that... We South Africa is because we get that many people have limited exposure to South to Africa, South Africa yes. and limited knowledge. We have packages that are different. Mm -hmm. For anyone who wants to visit our golf courses, those who enjoy wine, they go All to the wine true. scenaries. There's so many we've things. got the mountains, we've got everything yeah. that people can come and visit and experience from anything that you want to do, Definitely. it's possible to do. Ha, and we can't wait to visit South Africa, but I hope that you're also going to encourage. And yes, you know, the, it, it remains on us to ensure that a lot more people visit Ghana, year of return. So I'm sure so many people are coming. But when you think of Ghana, what do you think of? Kwame Nkrumah. Kwame Nkrumah. I see. When you think of Ghanaian tourism, what do you think? Uh, Ghanaian tourism, yes, indeed, the site in terms of the memorial site of the first departures yes. of, the of the slaves, it becomes of one of the... You'd yeah. understand, I come I from totally a political background. Totally so it. that, but sometimes we miss that, that our heritage and our history becomes part and points and of point. interest. Definitely. Because it's unique to everybody. Definitely. And the year of return, I said to them, is not only for Ghana. Mm -hmm. it's, a, for it's, a, it's for Africa. Mm. We celebrate it, all of us, because it has a meaning to all of us. Yeah. It symbolizes our freedom and without us understanding where we come from as Africans, we'll never be able to build a better Africa. Definitely. So we are currently sitting less than 60 million as mm. Africa to attract tourists across. Yes. We have to work together in partnership. I've agreed with the Minister of Tourism, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Tourism, Arts and Culture in Ghana okay. that we're going to hold hands and work together. There are lessons I can learn from Ghana. There are lessons that she can learn from South Africa. And our teams will collaborate to make sure that we thrive, the both nations. Because no nation should thrive alone. Yes. And in the continent, we yes. must all we work, must together work together to build the continent a better Africa for all.
Definitely. I've been speaking to the Minister of Tourism for South Africa, Mama Loko Kubai Ugubani, and um, she's here on a visit and also uh, for the United Nations World Tourism Organization Conference on Women Empowerment and Leadership in the African Region. She's here until tomorrow and then she leaves to Nigeria. It's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much um, for hosting Well, yes, me. and it's still TV3 New Day. Keep watching. We're going to try some more Ghanaian dishes, and so look forward to that. But